Okay, what I want to do now is talk about communication a little bit. Now, maybe you've had some of this before or maybe not. So let's go a little bit into this idea of the communication model. How does communication work? At its most basic, of course, communication is related to the questions are based on communication. That's the way I want to say it. Questions are a form of communication, right? So if we understand the communication model a little bit better, we can have an idea of what to be careful of, what to avoid, uh, what to look at carefully. So let's look at this example here of the communication model. When two people communicate, of course, what you have is there are many, many chances for miscommunication. Now, how does miscommunication happen? Miscommunication happens because from the person speaking to the person listening, you go through a few number of layers. For example, you go through an encoding process. That means you take your idea in your brain and you encode it into, into language symbols, uh, maybe written, maybe spoken, right? In this case, we're going to just speak. And there are many influences that can influence that message encoding, such as culture, such as knowledge such as experience, feelings, attitudes, emotions. So if you are feeling happy, you may say the sentence in one way. If you're feeling sad, you may say it in another way. This encoding then becomes words that you hear or words that you read or some other body language maybe, for example. It can be many things, but the point is that's what gets sent out. So if the person says something like, uh, my son likes cars, then you can imagine this is not so hard to understand. This looks pretty basic, doesn't it? I mean, what do we have here? We have my son likes cars, it comes over to the listener. The listener also decodes exactly the way that the speaker encoded. Only in this case, what do we have? We have that message, maybe spoken in this case, or written, or body language, comes through the layers here of culture, knowledge, emotions, feelings, attitudes, and it gets decoded. So it comes through my area here, and I personally can change that message to be something different. Why? Because it's come through this layer here of my decoding, influenced by things like my feelings, influenced by things like my, um, my culture. So this seems very simple, doesn't it? This should not be a problem. My son likes cars. But in this case, we can see that my son likes cars presents quite different images than what we assumed they were. When we first heard this person say, my son likes cars, what he was trying to say was, my son likes cars, meaning my grown up son who is 30 years old works on cars but the person who heard the message maybe he was thinking about a child who likes to play with toy cars so in this way we clearly can have completely different meanings in the brain between these people even though the word seems very simple and easy to understand so this miscommunication is caused from the encoding and the decoding between the two participants in the conversation and it's very very easy to happen there's not a whole lot that you can do to make sure it doesn't happen it's very difficult to prevent so how can we overcome this kind of situation where we have such a seems like so basic a thing if we can't even get basic ideas right, how in the world can we actually do things like complex negotiation? Well, one of the things we can, we can do is learn to ask questions. Because the more questions we ask, the more we can clarify. In that example we just had, we could say something like, oh, well, how old is your son? Uh, oh, what does your son do for, for a job, for a career? And then we would get the answer. We get the picture more clearly we wouldn't be so open to miscommunication. So let's look at these questions and begin to get an idea of how these questions work. 
There are basically two kinds of approaches to questions, positive and negative. Positive questions help make the negotiation clear, more clear. They overcome problems. They help to solve the problems we saw in the communication model between those two people. These questions can be answered and that helps lead to a building up of a good relationship, a trust between the two communicators, especially in integrative. So these kinds of questions are real questions. They're very helpful in understanding more. And you need to learn as a negotiator to ask those questions so that you don't have communication problems, miscommunication. And you need to learn also to supply questions even when you don't think you have a question. You think, oh, this is very clear to me, but maybe it's not clear. So you ask questions to try to get more information. Now inside of our textbook we have quite a number of examples. I'm going to just go over some of these very quickly. Some of the examples of positive questions are questions related to who, what, where, why, when, these kinds of questions. I think you've heard this in class before, right? Asking these who, what, when, why uh, kinds of questions, where. So anything that helps to understand things about this. What happened? When did it happen? Who was involved? Why did it happen? Uh, who were you selling to? What's the product you're trying to sell? Where are you selling it at? When will you begin? These all help make the situation clear. Open-ended questions are questions like, how do you like our new office? What are your thoughts on this offer? Can you tell us what you are looking for? These are very open questions, meaning I, I just in general, I'm asking you something. What do you think? What do you feel? What are you looking for? What kind of products are you interested in? What markets are you targeting in the future? Very big questions and it leaves it for the respondent to answer any way they want. Leading questions are questions that already have the answer in them. Don't you think this offer includes everything you asked for? You see, that's a good leading question. That means, ah, it's not really a question. That's me telling you. You already got what you wanted. I gave you what you wanted. How about this next one? It's a good one. Wouldn't you agree this price reduction is very generous? Wouldn't you agree that this price reduction is very generous. That means I, I don't want your answer. I'm just telling you. I've given you a lot. It's very generous. It looks like this is the best offer you can get. Isn't that true? <laughs> this is the best offer you can get. I'm telling you. I'm not really asking you, even though it sounds like a question. Okay, so along these lines, the idea is you need to think about what is your... Um, what is your overall direction? Are you looking for integrative or are you looking for distributive? And then use your questions in a way that helps support that approach. We have planning questions, uh, complementing questions, some focus questions, and there are many different other kinds of questions you can check out in your book. Please use them in your RPG because it's gonna be very useful for you to execute your uh, role-playing game. Let's do a little follow-up here and talk about negative questions. Now negative questions are different than positive questions because negative questions really do not have an answer. And sometimes they can be very uh, aggressive. These questions are not really questions but they're really aimed at giving the other side some kind of feeling of pressure or sending them a very negative message. Let's look at a few examples here. For example, if you look at the first one, this is a perspective question. Can you see that this price puts us in a very bad market situation? Can you see, or something that can't you see, can't you see this price really hurts our company? Can't you see your price is too high? Can't you see you're making us lose money? See, those are negative questions and they're not really questions at all. Okay, there's other examples in your book you can follow up on. So what happens when you're in a negotiation and these questions are coming up? Now how can you deal with that? Well, here in this part of our book, 
we cover specific examples of how to respond to those tough questions, to those negative questions. For example, take it or leave it is one kind of uh, tactic you can use. If someone says, take it or leave it, that is, take my offer or give up, just go away, we won't give you anything, you can respond by saying, if we were able to find a more attractive alternative, would you still want me to take it or leave it? That means, if I found somebody else, is that really what you want? If I found another company, is that really what you want? Or you could say the next one, does a decision have to be made now? Or can we take some time? So you told me, take it or leave it, and I say, mm, do we have to do this right now? Can't we wait a little bit? And this, by, by postponing the time, I'm asking a question, can't we just take more time? And actually my question is trying to respond to your very tough approach. And my question is helping us to put it off, maybe mm, explore a little bit of another issue and come back to this later. So these are good examples of how you can use questions to respond to a very tough situation, a very hard situation, to make your negotiation not fail. Okay, I think that's a pretty straightforward chapter talking about the communications. Uh, I think my students, the biggest problem they have in doing the role playing game is that when they go out to the groups or companies and they begin to ask about prices and uh, quality and shipping times, I think that they don't really use this strategy of asking questions in a way that either helps integrative or distributive bargaining. They just, you know, kind of think, I'll just ask, what's your price? What's your delivery? What's your quality? And that's all I ask. But there are many other things you can ask about in order to help the other side understand your situation or to convey some ideas that help them think they know your secret information, which may not be the true secret information. So you really need to use this communication skill to execute either integrative or distributive. It's a bit of a hard one to explain. This is why we play the RPG. You really need experience to get the idea of this. Questions are key in either case. Either you're using win-win or win-lose, you still need to use questions because it really helps to move the negotiation forward and or to help the other side feel comfortable with you even if you're not executing an integrative strategy. Okay, so next time we're going to go looking at the RPG in detail. It's a little bit uh, complex, a little bit complicated, so I hope that uh, you can get some rest before you watch the next video and put on your thinking caps and a little bit of patience. Download the uh, PDFs and the, uh, fi I think it's an Excel sheet we use now this semester. Download that, get your hands on it, and let's see if we can really focus here on in because very soon begins your RPG game, your role-playing game of negotiation. And remember, your grade is going to be directly affected by how well you do. And it could be win-win, you get what you want, everybody gets what they want. It could be win-lose, you win, they lose. But you don't want to be the one on the losing side. You want to do everything you can to get on the winning side, whether that's win-win or win-lose. So please, focus yourself. And remember, if you're on the losing side, you may not even realize it until the score is all added up a week later, and then you could lose badly. You want to win. Okay? Keep that hunger. Keep that uh, target. Keep that objective. As business students, you need to really have that objective to win. It doesn't mean the other side always loses if you're using a win-win, but don't be afraid to. Don't be afraid to. Don't be, oh, the one who says, oh, I'm not worried to lose. It's okay if I lose. That is not a successful business approach. Companies that are okay to lose uh, at the price of ever winning, even if it's win-win, uh, well, they don't stay around too long. So I don't want you to be that way. I want you to be aggressive in winning, even if, it, if it's win-win, but don't be afraid to face win-lose distributive bargaining situations because they're so common. All right, good luck with that. I'll see you next time when we talk about our RPG games.